All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we still have another minute or so um, before getting started. Um, but the audio works, um, as does the screen sharing should be. Um, so I'll give people another minute here to join, and then uh, we will get started. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, this is our bi-weekly Tag Inspector training webinar. Um, this one is going to be on taming tag rules. Um, I know we've had a number of educational uh, webinars over the past, uh, past few weeks, past month or so, um, around creating tech policies, uh, creating governance policies, how to create rules and monitoring around that, migrating tags to a tag management system. Um, in a lot of those webinars, um, I know I've spoken at length about some of the different uh, fully automated ways of monitoring those different things, um, ways to automate the, the QA process for new tag implementation um, and ongoing data collection validation, uh, both from the governance perspective as well as uh, from the first party data collection analytics perspective. So I um, wanted to set up this training webinar to uh, just go through exactly how to set that up uh, and some of the different options for setting up those things within Tag Inspector. Um, a quick little bit of uh, kind of maintenance uh, just about Tag Inspector and myself. Um, Tag Inspector obviously is an automated tag auditing and data collection validation tool. Uh, I know many of you are active current users um, wanting to learn a little bit more, but I know there's some people out there as well um, that might just be interested in learning more about what's possible with the tool. Um, tag Inspector is a product of InfoTrust. Um, on the InfoTrust side, uh, we do web analytics, tag management, product development. Um, over 2,000 sites analyzed and supported annually, um, a number of training programs a year, and then presenting today, I'm Lucas. Um, I am the Tag Inspector product manager, so deal heavily with the actual tool, um, any enhancements, uh, actual development for, uh, for some of the functionality, and then also a uh, tag management consultant. So probably use the tool as much, if not more, than anyone else um, out there. So um, quick general agenda. Uh, it's going to be quick. I mean, it's a 30 minutes training webinar. Um, introductions, we're good there. Um, first, I'll go through the tag rules within the scan module. Um, so we'll go through what those can look like, the different options there, um, when to apply, you know, a few use cases. Uh, and then we'll hop over into the real time module uh, for our tag validation rules um, and what's possible there, how to set those up and some use cases there as well. Um, if you have any questions throughout uh, our time here talking, feel free to drop them over there on the right hand side. It should be um, in the question pane uh, within GoToWebinar. I will answer some of those uh, towards the end. And if you have any follow-up questions, um, you know, never hesitate just to reach out to me directly. I'm more than happy to help out with anything um, or even help set up some of these different rules if you have a specific use case. So uh, let me know, I'm more than happy to help. Perfect, okay. So to get started, um, we're just gonna hop straight into the UI. So in the Tag Inspector scan module, which is where you will be um, as soon as you log in to the interface, on the left-hand side here, uh, you will see the Tag Rules area. 
and you will have access to that if you are on a Tag Inspector Premium um, or above package. But if you click on the Tag Rules area, um, you will have a list of any current rules or policies that you have created. To create a new one, you'll just click here in the New Tag Rule area. Uh, which will take you to the actual configuration. So first step here as uh, we'll, we'll enter in a description. This is also what exactly the rule will be named. Um, so if I have my new tag policy, uh, you can enter in any emails to alert. Um, when you create a rule and then you go through and, and set up a scan and apply that rule or that policy to the scan, um, the validation or the rule failures, uh, so anything that's happening outside of the guidelines and the restrictions that you're putting within the rule, uh, anything that we identify that's breaking that rule, we will flag and summarize in an alert report uh, and in an alert email that can be sent to you. So you can put in your email if you're the one that wants to be alerted. If you have multiple members on your team, uh, you can put in multiple emails, just separate them with commas, commas there. As far as options here within the scan reports, uh, two different options, two different tag rule types. We have a white list, and then we have a black list. Um, as far as use cases go, white list, if you're interested in like the tag governance policy and, and tag rules there around what's allowed, what should be there, and you want to be notified if any unauthorized tags are loading on the site in any way, uh, that's where the, the whitelist would come in. So how the whitelist works, anything we find is considered unauthorized and it's gonna kick an alert um, unless you specifically define it within the rule or the policy uh, that it is allowed. Uh, you also have the flexibility here to define tags as required um, within a whitelist. So if something is set to required, not only is it allowed, um, but we'll also flag it if it's not found on, on a page. Uh, the blacklist here is the opposite. Uh, we're saying that everything is allowed, um, but if you identify something is not allowed, that's going to kick an error or that's going to kick an alert, um, as well as if you define something as required but it's not found, um, then that will kick an error and alert. So the blacklist is really helpful if you're looking for something specific. So if you're trying to QA a new tag implementation, um, or if you're trying to define a specific loading rule. Uh, so we use blacklist rules a lot uh, when helping clients through tag migrations to a tag management system. Um, as you'll see here in a second, we can define the required loading behavior of a tag. So I can say that Adobe Analytics is required to load through Adobe Dynamic Tag Manager, for example. Um, define that as required within a blacklist rule. Any instance of Adobe Analytics then loading outside of DTM uh, is going to kick an, an error for kick an alert. Um, so I'll start here just with the whitelist. Uh, save the rule. That's going to take me to uh, where I have the ability here to edit. So again, I have this set as a whitelist rule. And now I can begin adding conditions. Uh, these conditions, uh, again, I can define what tag it is that I'm looking for. Um, so let's just use Google here as an example. So I can say Google... Universal Analytics is allowed. I can add an additional, and I can put in my entire tag governance policy here. So if you have defined in your privacy policy, you have defined internally in your tag policy. Um, and again, we've gone through that process um, in a webinar a couple weeks ago that can be found on our blog. There's also um, written documentation on our blog uh, that can help with that process. but. Once you have everything defined of what's allowed, I can translate that policy here into these conditions within one individual rule. Um, what that allows me to do is say on an ongoing basis, say weekly, I schedule scans, I apply my rule, this automatically runs in the background um, each week, and then whenever an unauthorized tag is found, 
you're immediately alerted of what it is, where it is. You can dig into the reports to see exactly how it's loading. Um, you can take these one step further as well. Um, when I come in here to manage the rules, I can add additional rules within rules um, or rules within conditions. Uh, so the potential here is I can define on what URLs certain things are allowed or certain things are required. So I could say Google Universal Analytics is required on URLs that contain the shop. So maybe it's only on my e-commerce pages, not on my content pages. I can also define how a tag should be loaded. So I can say here Google Universal Analytics is allowed to be loaded through Google Tag Manager. This is the only loading behavior then on which Google Analytics is allowed to be loading on my site. Um, in other words, say I have my Google Analytics accounts or my Adobe Analytics account or whatever tag it is, um, and I know it's loading through, or it should be, only loading through my tag management system. If it's loading outside of that tag management system, even though the tag itself, the platform itself is allowed, it's not allowed to be loading via that other loading behavior. Um, so that's gonna flag that within the rule as well. Um, so when you have all of that defined again within your tag uh, policy, your tag governance policy, um, translates required loading behavior, required location, and the allowed tags um, all into one whitelist rule, and we're automatically validating that policy on an ongoing basis. Um, black rule or black list rule can work similarly um, in that again um, here I'm defining things as either required or not allowed um, I can apply these same additional conditions um, all and conditions here to say when something when a particular tag is not allowed to be loading in a particular way um, or if it's required across every single page or across a certain subsection of pages. So here again, this can help with that initial QA and validation process um, and then the whitelist ongoing for governance. For applying these policies and these rules within scans to a new scan, it's in step two of the start a new scan process. When I select here uh, my advanced options, I can just select the policy that I want to apply to a scan. Um, again, I can apply that policy to any scan that I want. If you have multiple sites, each has different rules, uh, that's fine. Just apply the respective policy to that respective scan. That is the rules within the scan module. I'm not going to hop over into the validation rules within our real-time um, functionality in, in module. Uh, real-time is different in that, well, one, how we're collecting the information. Uh, this is where the tag is sitting on the site. So we're validating live tag behavior all the way down to variables, values allowed to be uh, collected on a on a page. Um, so here, there's a little bit more flexibility uh, and much more granularity in what we can validate. Um, so how these work, you would define the name of your rule. I'll say analytics validation. Um, and I'll use uh, just Google Analytics here in this particular example, uh, but it applies to any tag. Uh, so there's two sections here. One, exactly what it is that we're validating, and then also when the rule should be applied. So for conditions under when a rule should be applied, a lot of flexibility here. Again, um, I can say all pages on a particular session landing page, on uh, first session refer, last session refer, number of user visits, page views, page refer, global JavaScript variable, user click on a particular DOM element, and then also current URL. Um, the most often used here are the current URL, user click on a DOM element, so I can uh, only choose to validate when a user clicks a button. 
global JavaScript variable, I can choose to create a rule and only apply that rule when the data layer object, for example, contains a particular attribute. Um, as those are the three most commonly used, and then as well as all pages, um, three most commonly used conditions here for rules. So say I want to do current URL, I have the ability to equals, does not equal, contain, start with, matches regex. Um, so uh, there's a lot of flexibility here. I can define exactly where loading behavior should happen. So probably the most common data collection validation rule is we want to validate and check that our analytics platform is collecting transaction information on checkout. Uh, that's probably number one. If it's a non-e-commerce site, it's typically that event information about what is being you know, downloaded or what is being submitted, and then that user information that's being uh, input for that particular lead conversion event, um, all of that is being collected. So I'm going to use the confirmation page or the checkout example here, um, but I would say that the current URL contains whatever the URL structure is here. Confirmation, whatever it may be. Um, I would define that here within when this rule should be applied. What I always tell clients um, and what I do myself is I mirror this, whatever's in this particular rule or whatever I'm entering here with what my firing trigger is in my tag management system um, typically. So if it is based upon, uh, you know, events, the track transaction event, for example, being pushed to my data layer object, I could even use something like the global JavaScript variable to tell it which object to look for. Data layer contains events. Uh, transaction ready, whatever you have it named as, um, or whatever it is that's being pushed that's then triggering that conversion event within the, uh, within, or for that particular tag in the tag management system. Um, so again, flexibility here. And what I'll do, um, everyone that's on right now, I will, uh, I'll send out along with, um, along with the, the deck and everything after this webinar, we'll send out, I have full documentation on all these different options. Um, so you can dig in a little bit deeper. I'll send that out to everyone at the conclusion here. But um, getting back to this, you know, a lot of options here. We define when that rule should be applied. And then up top here, we define what it is that should be validated. I have the ability to validate a tag request, global JavaScript variable, so I can validate data layer as well as the current URL um, of the individual page. For the tag request, similarly to the scans, what I'm going to do is define which tag it should be. Uh, so which request we're looking at, and then what exactly it is that I'm validating. So is it that it was loaded on the page? So did it fire period on that page? Um, did not load on the page? Uh, so that would be like a, a blacklist rule within real time uh, that we're always checking for. I can check for an individual parameter being set. So if I have a dynamic value, so um, transaction revenue uh, on a confirmation page on an e-commerce site, it's one of those critical pieces of information. Uh, was the full transaction revenue captured uh, by Google Analytics? So I would define what that parameter is that should be that would be carrying that value, uh, and I can look for a Google Analytics request being sent containing my transaction revenue parameter um, when the data layer contains that transaction ready event. So when this sh should be happening, uh, is it in fact happening all the time? Uh, I can also look for contains a parameter value. Uh, most common here is to look for the ID of your uh, particular version um, or instance of that tag. So with Google Analytics, it's a TID, which is your tracking ID, and it would be UA 
whatever your UA number is. Um, this is validating that not only is Google Analytics firing, but my Google Analytics is firing that corresponds to my particular property uh, that should be implemented on that page. What else um, is possible here, just as a, as a real quick example. So if my current URL, um, again, contains slash confirmation, say I want to validate my data layer implementation. Uh, so on that confirmation page, I can come here, um, again, post the tag request, global JavaScript variable. So I can say data layer contains um, or matches regex. Uh, to look for individual um, that event track transaction. Whatever it is that I'm pushing to that data layer object on the confirmation page uh, that I'm then triggering a lot of my tags off of, um, I can validate that those things are implemented properly. Um, or if I'm implementing enhanced e-commerce, for example, in Google Analytics, uh, I can look for particular aspects of that e-commerce object. Um, so I have e-commerce uh, products dot ID. Um, so I'm looking for that ID within the products array, within the e-commerce object, within my data layer. Um, so making sure and validating, automating that validation again um, of that particular um, particular instance. So once I create this rule. I simply apply it to my site um, down here. How I do this is first I can define when to check these values during which event, either the DOM load event or the window unload. By default, window unload is going to be checked. Um, I typically leave that. Uh, the only time to use DOM load is if something should be happening uh, prior to the DOM load event on the page. Um, and that's you can use for testing timings and things like that. But a window unload, what that means is that the define tag behavior within the rule is just happening before that user leaves the page. I then select the site that I want to apply the rule to uh, and it submit it and then it will be live. So um, as soon as that action is taken, uh, so as soon as the page is loaded in this example containing when the URL contains the confirmation, um, then, for this rule example, my data layer um, is going to be validated, that it contains that e-commerce object and the product ID. Um, if you're looking and validating a specific tag, then you know I could be looking on whenever the URL contains confirmation, then uh, you know, XYZ tag, I double-click floodlights um, are being validated that they are actually firing. For every single page load that meets the condition that's defined within the rule, we're going to validate it. And we're either going to say that it passes or that it fails. Uh, so at a massive scale, you're able to see for every single transaction, for example, for ongoing monitoring and validation, for every single transaction, I can see did Google Analytics fire? Did it collect my transaction revenue? Uh, if not, you can dig down into you know, exactly why that happened. And then you'll also see that failure rate. So you can see how frequently is that, uh, is that data loss happening. Um, alerts with, within real time uh, work a little bit different than in the scans. Uh, it doesn't just automatically do that. You do need to configure an alert um, to be associated with the rule. Uh, the reason that why we do this is because since we are validating at such a huge scale, massive scale, and we are obviously validating uh, JavaScript <laughs> on a page uh, due to ad blockers or connection issues uh, of a particular user, latency issues, um, we can't expect our tags to execute as, um, as they should every single time. Um, so to combat against that and only alert you and notify you um, automatically when something is wrong, we want you to be able to define at what point is something awry. Um, so when creating alert here within real time, I, I name my validation, uh, tag example alert, 
I provide a description of what it is. GA firing on confirmation. Um, and then I select which rule it is exactly that I want to that I want to test. Um, <clears throat> so when you have to create the rule first, and then you would select it here to apply it to that alert. I then have the flexibility here of when do I want to be alerted? Is it when the failure count surpasses a number? Um, typically for something like this, we'll put it for the failure rate is above, say, 5%. Um, we then define the time period that we're wanting to look at, uh, so within the past one hour. So as mentioned, whenever the condition within the rule is met, we're validating. So if you have enough volume, um, say typically within an hour you'll see a thousand uh, transactions, if that's what the condition is. Um, one hour is sufficient. If it's uh, a lead event where you might have 10 in a day, uh, I might want to look over the previous 24 hour period, um, just so I know that there's a sufficient number of that action being taken uh, to warrant an alert. I can then define if I want that to be applied across the entire site or across individual pages um, and it excluding pages validated fewer than X number of times. Um, for the emails here, again, I can list out every single person on my team or across different teams that should be alerted um, when this failure takes place or when the failure rate surpasses the threshold at which you've defined here. Um, define how often you want the condition to be checked. Uh, so whenever this piece right here is surpassed. So if my failure rate surpasses 5% uh, over the previous 24-hour period, uh, my alert here is going to go into an alert state. So if I come into the alerts reporting within the UI, I'm going to see it as red. And it's going to be notifying me. For an email alert to go out, uh, we define how frequently we want that condition to be checked. So our system will see if something is in an alert state, then it will send the email to everyone listed here. Um, the highest frequency we can check conditions is every 20 minutes. Um, <clears throat> so when we say real time um, within Tag Inspector, if you have a failure, even if it's, you know, you, you set it to if something fails one time, tag fails one time, um, you, you'll have a, and that actually happens, it does fail one time, um, you'll have an email sitting within your inbox within 30 minutes uh, of that failure occurring. Um, I can create alerts and then enable, disable them, but all I would have to do is submit it, and it would be there, sitting there, uh, ready to go. Um, that is everything. As far as training for what we can cover today uh, within the scan rules and alerts, as well as the real-time rules and alerts, like I mentioned, I'll send out some additional documentation here uh, to everyone that has joined. Um, but if anyone has any questions at all, uh, please you know, let us know. I'm more than happy to help out in any way. Um, if anyone has any quick questions right now, feel free to drop them in the GoToWebinar pane. It doesn't look like anyone has anything at this time, uh, which is fine. Um, if you do have, uh, you know, if anything comes up as you get in there, uh, start playing around with the rules some more. Um, really, if anything comes up, feel free to reach out, let me know. Uh, happy to help. Um, and I will send out that additional documentation here um, shortly. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, next week, we have another educational webinar. It is on advanced techniques in, in uh, a tag management system. We have one of our developers, actually, internally that works on a lot of tag management projects uh, and configuration of a lot of different tag management systems uh, that will be leading that. Uh, so if you want to really deep dive into what's possible in a TMS, you know, please join us for that. Um, and then we'll be back in another two weeks uh, with another training webinar as well. Uh, so be on the lookout for that and uh, let us know, if, you know, any other topics that might be relevant for you. 
uh, that you'd like to see us cover. Thank you, everybody.